Hi everybody and welcome back to Bookworm on the Coast. Now I have silently been worried that Brian Koberger may have been linked to other unsolved cases and that no one is really looking into it. But I'm glad to report that that is not the case. Authorities are indeed looking into it and obviously by now his DNA has been submitted into CODIS. So far authorities have not been able to link him to any other crimes, at least not in Pennsylvania. Obviously this will be an ongoing process and I'm sure the same process will be followed in Idaho and Washington state. However, Regardless of Brian Koberger pretty much being cleared of further crimes in Pennsylvania, I am going to continue posting shorts on a few cold or unsolved cases in the state. Let's not just have these channels for our own curiosity and pleasure, but also to now and then provide a service and try and help where we can. Although the Idaho 4 Coburger case is a true mystery, well, at least for now and likely until the case goes to trial, I find myself somehow being less tense and less prone to getting upset and angry and irritable than with most other cases. I cannot fathom why Brian Koberger decided to one day wake up and start planning a murder. He is intelligent. He was building a career. He seemed to have caring parents and sisters. Yes, he appears to be an awkward lad, maybe not as socially adept as he should be or would have liked to be. But nothing in any of the multitude of stories about Brian suggest that he was particularly shy. Neighbours said he greeted them and chatted to them and although not many or any of his attempts to have a romantic relationship seems to have led to anything, there are many socially inept or socially awkward people who do not end up committing horrific murders and who do eventually end up meeting someone who do take to them. Often this happens once they are settled in a career or a work environment. I had a look at Brian's old ramblings on social media about visual snow and feeling cut off from people unable to connect or feel empathy, but those writings, although odd by certain standards, were the writings of a 15 or 16 year old. Although Brian is still widely or generally considered a student, he is in fact now 28 years old and has held a job before. So one would assume that in the 12 years since those teenage writings, some maturity took place and some of life's questions had been answered, even though it is still possible that he, like anyone else, still had issues. But are or were those issues enough for him to kill four young people in this heinous manner? And what would his thought process and reasoning be? Simple curiosity, hatred, anger, or is he simply psychopathic or evil? Or the very last alternative, is he indeed innocent or did he have an accomplice? At the moment, there are numerous speculations, mainly that Brian knew or met at least two of the young women. There are also rumours that Brian attended one of their house parties. Then there is even a rumour that it was a drug house and that someone living in the house was supplying other students with drugs. There are as many theories as there are channels talking about the case. The point is that until trial, we shall not have any 
of these answers or facts. And often what is presented as fact is indeed pure speculation and nothing more. Like everyone else, I still have questions plaguing me as well. Questions like, who was his actual target? Maddie, Zana, or just Maddie, or any of the girls? Did he actually not care who was there? He knew there were girls in the house and he didn't really care who would be there when he gets there? Or was it really targeted against one or the other? I personally have a theory, and again, a theory, based on my own observation. And that would be, we have seen Maddie's behavior in a few videos. Them walking back from the bar where it was clear that Kaylee was not pleased with whatever Maddie told Adam. And later, we see and hear Maddie tell a young man to fuck off Mr. Maddie is also the only one of whom there are allegations of bullying, whether it's true or not. Now, don't get me wrong, nothing warrants being killed like this. And I am not victim shaming or victim blaming here. But if Maddie was that outspoken and had less breaks to her personality than her roommates, it is quite possible that she could have made a remark towards an awkward Brian Koberger, which struck the wrong chord with him and ignited and fueled his rage and anger. The second issue, which I find extremely difficult to accept and understand, is how it was possible for Brian or anyone else to commit four murders in this way in a matter of 10 minutes or less all by himself. Just the act of parking his vehicle, walking towards the home, entering the house, going upstairs must have taken at least one to two minutes. Then disposing of Maddie and Kaylee, going downstairs, encountering Zanna and Ethan, which resulted, as we know, in somewhat of a struggle before then finally leaving the home, getting back in his vehicle and driving off by 4.20 a.m. And of course, like everyone else, I struggle to accept that housemate Dylan Mortensen did not hear enough to alert her to the danger in the home. And after encountering a stranger, she still took more than eight hours to call 911. No matter what, it does not make sense. I accept that we don't have the facts yet, but my instinct tells me that there may be some untruth being told by either Dylan herself or on behalf of Dylan. I'm personally going to give this case a rest until the court procedures resume in June. But in the meantime, there are many other mysterious and unsolved cases to look at and which need our attention. So, until we meet back here again on the next video, please take good care of yourself and each other. Bye.